Hi everybody, Captain Foley with you today. Um, so i got a few things I want to share with you today. Um, something arrived in the mail. I found a few things when I was going through the uh, reorganizing downstairs a little bit. So there's a few things I want to show you and share with you. And like I said, I got something new in the mail, which is very exciting. So we're going to check that out also. And I've also done one or two little upgrades to my 350 scale Arboretum and Officer's Lounge that we're going to get to. So. Thank you for tuning in, and uh, we'll get right to that, shall we? All right, so first things first. Like I said, I found a few things that are kind of cool and exciting that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, first off, I, like I showed you in my last uh, video, I found some of my old FASA ships. Well, I also found one of my favorite ones, which I had been looking for for a while. And here it comes in now, the Andor class. Sorry about the brightness here. There we go. This was painted like years and years ago by me, so painting is kind of sketchy. Hold on, let me just turn off the upper light. Okay, that might be a little bit better. Um, not really. Let's turn this one off then. There we go. So this is the Andor class. Like I said, it was painted a long time ago by me, so it's very sketchy. This is one of the... Um, FASA ship designs. I like, I love it. I think it's very cool. So, I'm glad I found this one. I want to uh, perhaps do a model of this one day. A friend of mine, well, an acquaintance of mine, is actually doing one, um, a kit bash of it. So, and that would be Dave Lewis. So Dave, if you're watching, awesome job. I can't wait to see it. Um, I'll definitely uh, post pictures of it and whatnot on here. Um, I also found uh, one of my old lenticular mouse pads, which, you know, I don't use a mouse much anymore. And if I do, it's an optical mouse. I don't need a mouse pad, but here it is. It's called Phaser Battle. And I've got a better, high, uh, higher quality one in the other room on the wall. But I've been looking for this for a while. Because I think it'd be a cool addition to somewhere around here. <laughs> um, so I found that. Um, I'm going to show you the uh, other one right now. So the other one's in here on my Star Trek Wall of Fame. There it is right there. It's got like a matte border around it with the Star Trek Phaser Battle. It's a little bit better color darker better quality so pretty cool just thought I'd share that with you guys focus and back at the desk now I found these also which had been missing for a long time can't remember where I got these exactly but very cool ships. This one, unfortunately, is missing the one phaser up here. I got the one over here. And on the bottom, we got a fin on that side, right here. But the other side is missing that. So, missing one or two pieces. They were in the bottom of a box, which surprises me a bit because. I take better care of my stuff than that. But anyway, so I found those ones. Um, also, Mirror Universe MX-01. And if you go over here, we've got a Battle Damaged original series. The Battle Damaged refit from Wrath of Khan. And of course, behind it there, we have the Reliant, which is also a battle damaged version. So, very cool. I was so happy to find those. Um, I have a few more floating around somewhere, which hopefully I'll will turn up in my travels. And of course, any updates on that, you'll be the first to know, I'm sure. 
Um, I will definitely keep you guys in the loop regarding that. Um, next thing we're going to get to is my Arboretum and Officer's Lounge. Last time we saw it, I put the Paragraphics Photo Etch Kit on, and I had also done the HDA Model Works um, decals for the walls. And the very final thing I did was a quick shot or two of um, dull coat. Well, I decided to go to the craft store. And as you can see, I bought some like moss type stuff that I added in there. Let me turn this off again. To kind of give it a more 3D nature-ish feel. I didn't I don't want to replace all the trees with that because it's not really what this model is about. And like I said, you're gonna see it from the side. I don't know how much you're gonna see. So I just think that's a nice little touch to kind of up the realism a little bit perhaps. And I did the same with the officer's lounge. Um, first of all, it needed a shot or two of um, dull coat as well. And then I repainted the, let me get this out here so I can point for you. I repainted the little tables, the gaming tables, or the end tables, whatever you want to call them. Down there. So they're gloss shiny black now, which is what they were. But I repainted the. I'll turn this off again. Sorry, guys. There we go. That's a better look. But you can see how the tables are shiny glass like they would be. I've added this tree and this tree. Which you're not going to see much of anyway. And I got my. Where is it? Right here. TOS uh, Enterprise poster, which thanks to my good friend William Mann, he provided the decals for me. So it's got that poster above the couch, which is cool. And of course, when you. Yeah, you can't really see. You shine the light in, it's going to look really cool when it's finished. That's all I can say. It's going to look good. So we got those done. Uh, I'll quickly show you the Arboretum here again. The, the effect of the, that the HDA decals give it, which is really cool. So you got the corridor there that lights up. That'll be lit up and that'll be lit up. So it's gonna be really cool. Added a few little touches that I think really kind of enhance it. I might add more texture, maybe to the trees. I don't know yet. We'll have to see. Sorry if I can't, if it doesn't seem like I can concentrate today, because I can't. I've had a horrible day. I have shooting pain in the back of my eyeballs. So I feel like they're going to explode. I have such a massive headache. Had it all day. So, got those done. Um, showed you the things I found. And then, in the mail, um, a f person, uh, well, he's a friend of mine, uh, Scott, Bell, he was a member of the Trek Yards. Uh, we started talking, and he owns a well. He does. Oh, he has a website called Starship. What is it? Uh, story. Starship Dynamics. He also has a Facebook group. So check out the st Facebook group Starship Dynamics, and uh, check out some of his work. Um, I will we'll provide links in the description below, so you guys can check out his stuff. It's a lot of it's available for sale, and uh, he sent me an example, which is really nice of him, uh, in the mail today. So. I opened it up. I haven't looked at it yet, really, so I'm going to see it for the first time with you guys. So, um, he sent me the general plans for the Liberty class, General Dynamics, Boeing, DY-100, Interplanetary Freighter, which is the Botany Bay. Um, it's a little bit different design than in the show. That's because he used the uh, Seawolf. Yes, the Seawolf class submarine. Uh, the reason he did that was he bought, he was looking to kitbash a Botany Bay, and he found a 350 scale Sea Wolf. So he th started the kitbash, and he thought he'd drop plans for it, which is what these turned into. And the plans got finished before the actual kitbash has. It's not even finished yet. So, but he's got the plans together, and he sent me a copy of them. Um, you can purchase these on when it, if you click on the links below. 
And he's got a bunch of other ships too, which are really cool. So definitely check those out. Um, he said he put over like 100 man hours into doing this. Scattered, you know. Uh, I think he started last March, he said. So quite a, quite a time. Oh, cool. Let's see here. Let's do a quick show. You see the different cargo containers with the different uh, logos on them. There's even a Wayland Corporation from Aliens. That's awesome. Uh, what's this? Dyson Eurodyne. Logistics and Space Transport Command. So, pretty cool. There's bottom view and top view. I love how it's like an original design. It's got the little uh, control thrusters, or sort of maneuvering thrusters like the shuttle has. Um, different engine configuration of the, of the, from the Botany Bay we see on TV, but uh, he made it very realistic and designed it after the uh, time it was supposed to be launched was the 1990s. So he used equipment and NASA technology from that era to put this together, which is very cool. So there's the cargo modules, front and back views. And finally, we have the cutaway section, which is very neat. I really like this. And this is based on, uh, like I said, the Seawolf submarine, Seawolf class. Can't really see what I'm doing here. So yeah, those are a very cool addition to the truck yards. Um, you never know. A little spoiler alert: these might come in handy in a very soon to be released episode of Trek Yards. Maybe not soon to be released, but soon to be filmed anyway. What ship am I talking about? We'll never know. I'll just read you what it has in the back here: uh, the DY100 interplanetary freighter freighter was the ship commissioned or commandeered by Khan and his crew in the late 20th century as related in the classic Star Trek episode Space Seed. In that episode it is stated that the DY-100 was designed and flown in the 1990s. These plans depict a reimagining based on what, how one might have appeared had it been built with real world technology of the 90s. Her habitation module, for instance, is adapted from a decommissioned Seawolf class submarine and the ship is powered by a NERVA-3 advanced nuclear propulsion system based on the actual NERVA research program and various hardware is actual NASA hardware then in use. The ship is depicted as the Botany Bay as she appeared in day-to-day -day service. She is wearing the livery of the ISA, the International Space Agency, where she made regular cargo runs between Earth, the Moon, and Mars. About these schematics, these high, this high quality packet consists of four 11 by 17 inch fold out sheets which show five external views of the ship as well as a detailed interior cross section. And then of course we've got general plans, general dynamics Boeing, the class type, and yeah, the Starship uh, Dynamics logo. So very cool, I was very excited to get this. Thank you very much for this Scott. Um, very cool. And I've been in talks with Scott now because uh, he told me that he was sending me this. So we got to talking and I'm thinking of having him do up plans for my um, Star Trek Online ship, the USS Executioner, which um, I've mentioned in previous videos before. I actually want to build a model of it at some point. So it's just an original Constitution class, but it's got the cool paint scheme with the gray with the black striping. Very, very slick looking. So if he can do up plans for that, That'll be awesome, and I'll definitely share those with you guys um, when and if that happens. So, anyway, guys, I think that's it for Captain Foley today. Um, like I said, I'm not feeling good. This video has actually kind of exacerbated my headache, so I'm 
hurt myself for you guys. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's about it. Um, as always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in and uh, watching me babble. I appreciate all you guys out there that follow me. Uh, I do what I can. I'm just me. Um, uh, I'm going to start work on the modifying the 350 scale uh, refit enterprise for lighting. Uh, I need to do some drilling and some modifications that way. So I'm going to be doing videos of that very soon because um, I've got information now from the people I'm getting my lighting kit from, Gulliver Scale Modeling. Um, awesome guys. The Tier 2 lighting kit is amazing. And uh, so that's going to be on its way. And they've sent me some tutorial videos um, to check out. So I kind of know what I'm doing now. I will be able to show you guys also. Um, they're making a CD that they're including with their kit so that it's a step-by-step -step on how to modify the model and how to actually install the lighting kit. So it's very handy. And I was luck I was fortunate enough to be like one of the first ones to see it. And so I'm going to be applying what I've learned to my model and get it ready for the lighting kit when it gets here. So look forward to that. And also look forward to Trek Yards. Uh, the, today is Tuesday. So there's a new episode coming out this Saturday. Uh, November 1st so got Halloween on Friday and then a new episode of Trek Yards that can be your treat you know I won't give you a trick this year but I will give you a treat so look forward to that on November 1st and then every two weeks after that of course so episode 3 will be out on the 1st so definitely stay tuned for that and thank you guys for tuning in like I said please like and subscribe to my channel uh, I've always got stuff going on lots to do lots to see so I will see you guys very soon. This is Captain Foley signing off. Bye-bye.